der Ars Electronica auf Spurensuche, Ars Electronica eine Spurensuche. So könnte man eigentlich sehr gut die Intention hinter diesem Festival beschreiben. Wir haben mit Artificial Intelligence etwas, das sicher in vieler Form technisch jetzt schon unheimlich faszinierend weit gekommen ist, aber das vor allem eine ganz ferne Projektion für uns ist. Eine technologisch-wissenschaftliche Projektion, aber vor allem auch etwas, das unser Grundverständnis dessen, wie wir als Menschen in unserer Welt agieren, wie wir uns ausdrücken, wie wir vor allem Technologie entwickeln, um auch eine Extension, eine Erweiterung unserer Existenz hier zu haben, das ist eigentlich dieser Kontext, in den wir reingehen wollen. Und für eine Spurensuche braucht man Partner, da braucht man viele Menschen. Man muss ein Thema erst einmal umzingeln, dann sozusagen sich langsam annähern und mit vielen verschiedenen Perspektiven und Blickwinkeln das Thema nicht nur finden, sondern letztlich auch formen. Ich glaube, das ist das Großartige dieses sehr interdisziplinären Festivals, dass wir ein Thema nicht nur diskutieren, sondern auch ein Stück weit zur Gestaltung des Themas beitragen können. Well, artificial intelligence, of course, is a very catchy term, and uh, and that's not and that's not to say something negative, but of course it covers too many things for too many people. And what I, I started my lecture by trying to be clear about what I was going to talk about, and for me that was pretty straightforward. It was the old the notion which start, sort of started with Alan Turing, that uh, we would try, try to build a general intelligence system. Okay, and that's very different from many uses of the term artificial intelligence now. The notion of a general intelligence is, is an intelligence that can address all those non and unknown situations. Now the only example of a general intelligence that we have is the human brain. Actually, when I sat down to, you know, create the Kitty AI, I was really thinking about how we could address, uh, you know, some certain problems that are happening in our immediate environment that has a global impact, such as uh, climate change, right? And I was very inspired by the self-driving car networks and like how AI is becoming more and more prominent. And uh, that topic itself is raising all these questions, like do we trust? the car that's driven by an AI, is this going to save, you know, gas, are we going to consume less gas, etc. Even if it had this really cute face of a cat, people were like, oh, this is a cute dictator, like, you know, this is a ruler, and like, people were really kind of freaking out about it. So I noticed that there's this thing when the power is highly concentrated and it's very visible to us, we freak out. I don't think it's a utopia, but I don't think it's a dystopia either. It's more like an attempt at what can we do with these technologies to actually really change the way we live in cities. Self started as a proposal to the Australia Council, I proposed um, to create or to develop a biological self-portrait. I had a biopsy done where I collected my skin cells and then I took them back and I grew quite a lot of skin cells of my own, which was quite um, interesting at the time because it was the first time that I looked at myself through the microscope. I wanted to give those neurons a body. When I was 12 years old, I wanted to be a rock star. I wanted to become David Bowie. So I decided to embody my childhood dream by giving my external brain a sound producing body. So you know, art can and should play a very important role in trying to make awareness. Mm -hmm. 